Each and every one of you watching this video right now is the light in someone's darkness, whether you know it or not. You may never know that you're the light in someone's darkness, but the important thing is, is that you need to keep shining bright. I want to give a very special shout out to one of our subscribers. His name is Todd Bushcraft. And I'm going to share a little bit of Todd's story with you here that he left with us in a comment on our channel, a public forum, forum, open public forum. So you, you can read it there. You may have seen it, but I'm going to share it with those of you who haven't. Um, and I want each and every one of you in the comment section of this video, just say a kind word for Todd. Okay. Now, <clears throat> before I tell you about Todd, I'm going to give another shout out to somebody who will probably never see this video. Uh, just because I mean, I mean, we're just not that You guys know who we are. I thank you for being here, but um, You're in the great minority of the massive amount of people that exist in this world And so I seriously doubt this person will ever see this um, Staff Sergeant Eddie Baker who if he stayed in the military, I'm sure made it to sergeant first class and may probably even made it to um no, he was a Sergeant First Class, I'm sorry. Sergeant First Class Eddie Baker. If he stayed in, I'm sure he ended up being a First Sergeant somewhere and probably a very good one, if he did. <clears throat> um, maybe a Sar Command Sergeant Major, I don't know. He, he was that kind of a caliber of a leader. So here's who uh, Sergeant First Class Baker was. I'm just gonna call him Sergeant Baker. Uh, when I got home from Iraq in 2009, uh, I spent six months at a place called the Warriors in, in Transition Battalion, at, which at the time was Fort Lewis in Tacoma, Washington. It's now called Joint uh, Fort Air Base McCord Lewis. It's an Air Force and an Army base, I believe. But I was in uh, what they call the Warriors in Transition Battalion for six months. These are people who come back injured um, psychologically, physically, and need some treatment. I had a non-combat related injury. Uh, I had to have surgery. Um, I had to go through therapy. The gist of this story is that where I stayed, it was a very dark place. Uh, the living conditions were wonderful. They were excellent. The staff was wonderful. Uh, I was there shortly after like this big sensational story broke about Walter Reed Hospital in DC. Uh, the Warriors in Transition Battalion at Fort Lewis was like the West Coast version of Walter Reed. And so they were just spick and span. They knew they were being watched by the eyes of the world. They made sure to do everything right. And they may have been doing everything right before that story broke. I don't know. What I can tell you is that when I was there uh, late summer, early fall of 2009 through February of 2010 is when I left, uh, there were no complaints on my end as far as cleanliness, uh, hygiene conditions. Um, the food was excellent, but, but folks, it was a very dark place. It was dark because we were hurt. We were in pain. Uh, many of us came home to lives that represented nothing of the life that we had before we deployed. We come home to find that families are gone, uh, physical possessions, houses, all this stuff's gone. Uh, these, these are the stories that you don't see on the media. You know, we see these video clips of the dad surprising his daughter. You know, she's a cheerleader. She's out there cheering in the football game, and the dad jumps over the fence, and she didn't know he was coming home, and they hug, and everybody cries. That's a wonderful story, and I'm glad those stories are out there. But what we don't see are the stories of the dads coming home and their daughters aren't there, nor are their sons, because they're just gone. Uh, they've been taken elsewhere, and these stories are, are too common. And so anyway, very dark place. It was a dark place because I myself uh, became addicted to narcotics during my time spent there. I was prescribed uh, Vicodin and uh it reopened the floodgate of addiction into me, which I thought, well, for nearly eight full years had been closed. Um, there were suicides. And guys, I'm, uh, I'm not going to go too far down the dark tunnel with this. I'm just giving you some examples to show you how important Sergeant Eddie Baker was in my life during this time. Sergeant Baker, I actually wrote a short story when I was writing for Yahoo many years ago called 
light in the darkness and it was a story about staff sergeant baker and about how he helped me he was like the hand that reached into this dark place and kept me from being completely absorbed in the abyss um on Christmas, because I spent the holidays there that year. Christmas, I had Christmas dinner at the at the cafeteria in a hospital uh, with a guy who was an E5, a buck sergeant. I was an E4 specialist. I, I, I entered as a specialist uh, because I have a bachelor's degree, and when I left, I was a specialist because I wasn't worthy of promotion. Um, went in an E4, got out an E4, no regrets. Uh, the E4 Mafia. Shout out to the E4 Mafia. And if you were in the Mafia, you know what I'm talking about. Shh. And that's all secret squirrel stuff, so don't ever tell. Um, so I had Christmas dinner in the hospital with this buck sergeant in E5 who had been at this Warriors in Transition Battalion for quite some time. I think two years. And this guy, he was, he was depressed. I mean, he was depressed. Uh, I don't know the litany of prescriptions he was on. Um... I, rem I remember it felt odd because that was the only time this guy had ever talked to me. When I first got there, I used to try to talk to him, say, Hello, Sergeant. Good afternoon, Sergeant. Good morning, Sergeant. Just because I just talked to everybody, as you can tell from these morning rambles. Um, he never said hi. Never said nothing. So after after a time, I just stopped talking to him. So that's what I'm like. I mean, and I do that here. There's folks in the area I've tried to speak to, hello, in passing, and they just act like I'm not there. So after three or four times, I just stopped I just stop. I mean, you've made it clear to me you don't want to speak to me, so I, I'm just not going to speak to you anymore. Well, this guy on Christmas, he I was walking by his table, and he asked me to sit with him and eat with him. And I was kind of shocked, so I did. And we spent about an hour together. I enjoyed my time with him. And uh, first and last time I ever talked to him. And then when we had first formation after New Year, because there was like a break, we came back like January 2nd or something like that, 6 a.m., first formation uh this guy wasn't there he wasn't in formation so everybody's like where's sergeant so-and-so so everybody starts looking for sergeant so-and-so he hadn't signed out he hadn't gone out on leave um well, they found him about an hour later and he was in his room and he was he was dead uh he'd gone in there at some point over the previous uh several days and he had I guess he'd been stashing up his meds and he took them all at once and drank a bottle of liquor and he went to sleep and never woke up. And guys, that's a that's a very dark story and that's not the kind of stories this, this channel's about. These are the kind of stories, I guess, well, in a way it is because that's where I was and I like highlighting where I am now, here on the homestead with my beautiful bride and our darling son and we're healthy, we're happy, I'm clean, I'm sober, I'm drug free, alcohol free and I enjoy every day of sunlight. and. Sergeant Eddie Baker was so instrumental in my life back then because that, that, that was my surroundings. I mean, the story I just told you, the things I told you, that was my environment for six months. But when I would see Sergeant First Class Baker, he was always positive. He was always smiling. He always went out of his way to approach me and talk to me. There were times when I, oh, I was beyond clinically depressed. I mean, it was just a mess. You know, you'd be in bed at 3 o'clock in the morning, and somebody would be banging on your door. It's because they saw you going to the pharmacy that day and refilling your prescriptions, and they were out of theirs. And they would just bang on your door and bang on your door. They were drug seekers. They were looking for drugs. I mean, guys, yeah, dope fiends, we call them. It's a dark place. It's a very dark place. And uh, Staff Sergeant Baker was there every day with a kind word, with lengthy, meaningful conversations. You know, when, when, when I first met him, when I first went to be stationed there, he addressed the group that was there that day, and he said, I'll treat you the way you let me know you want to be treated. And your actions tell me, not your words. He says, if you act like a man and you treat me with respect, I'll treat you like a man and I'll treat you with respect. If you're a punk, I'll treat you like a punk. He was true to his word because we had some punks there or folks that acted like punks. Everybody was in a dark spot. And I was older. I was in my late 30s by this time. There were a lot of young men in their early 20s who I, I think just didn't have the um, emotional maturity level yet to kind of, uh, they still had a tendency to, um, what do we call that? Uh, when we take things out on people and it's not their fault, misplaced aggression, there was a lot of that going on. And he treated them like punks. Uh, I think maybe we related because we were about the same age, and um, so we had that going for us. But there were times when, I mean, 
things were so dark. I just never thought that I would ever see the light again. But then I'd run into Staff Sergeant Baker, or I mean, Sergeant First Class Baker, and he was the light in my darkness. And he pulled me through, and he pulled me through for six months. And there was a time, and I, 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 I saw him off to himself one time, and this is after I'd been there, uh, probably halfway through my service there, or my stay there. He was off to himself at a place where he obviously thought no one could see, and he was crying. So I don't know why. I don't know what was going on. But I, I know that, you know, I got to know him a little bit. Uh, well, I got to know him quite well. I know he was either separated or divorced, and he had a son who was three, I think, at the time, and he didn't get to have his son all the time. And so he, he had things going on in his personal life. He had his own struggles, but despite that, he was always positive and always bright for us. He was that light in the darkness that got me through that dark place. And so, uh, Eddie Baker, if you're out there, if you ever see this, uh, that was 10 years ago. This is 2018. I went there. I stepped foot in the door of that place in 2008. So it's been 10 years, and this man, who I've not spoken to since, still uh, holds a very special place in my memory, in my heart, in my mind, and he always will. So, Eddie Baker, if you see this and you're out there, thank you for what you did for me 10 years ago, and no doubt many others as well, and I hope that you're well. Now, Todd Bushcrafter. He's a subscriber to this channel. He sent me a, a message in the comments section yesterday. And he said that he's happy he found our channel. He loves our videos. He loves watching us go hiking, doing things with the, you know, as a family. He loves uh, the beauty of our homestead here. He shared with me that when he was in high school in 1984, he was a senior, they found a lump in his finger about the size of a BB. It could move around. He went to the doctor to find out what it was, and he said, oh, this is nothing. This is harmless. So he joined the Navy. And Todd, thank you for your service. But he had been in the Navy about four or five years, and the lump changed. It started moving around. No, it stopped moving around. It no longer moved around like a BB. It kind of became uh, like it's, it remained in place. So he went and had it checked out. <clears throat> and they removed it, but they said it still wasn't cancer at this time. However, he continued to have complications. He went back. They found out he did have cancer, and they had to remove his finger. Over the years, because we're up in about 1990 now, through the years, the cancer spread. Todd lost a lung. So now he's down to one lung. And currently, he's got tumors in his only lung, and uh, it, the tumors have also gone into his kidneys. Uh, recently, he's found out that the tumors are getting larger. Todd has done several forms of chemo, other sorts of therapy or, or medical treatment, and thus far, Nothing's worked. He's currently getting some treatment for these enlarged tumors, and he says as of now, he doesn't know if the treatment is working or not. And then he thanked me for making these videos, having this channel. Todd, thank you, because, uh, well, just for letting me know that. I mean, you told me this, and, and I said, I, I replied to your comment, you've probably seen it, and this was yesterday morning. This was t almost 24 hours ago as of right now, and this, your story stayed with me, Todd, and... <sighs> Todd, my thoughts, my prayers, my my best wishes, everything is going out to you. And this this video, this morning ramble this morning is yours. This is dedicated to you. Uh, Todd, in that comment, let me know that in a way I, I'm kind of me and my family in here, and what we're doing is kind of like uh, the light in his darkness. And I'm not I don't want to glorify myself for what we're doing. If I'm a light in anyone's darkness, it's just a very dim, flickering flame, like a match before it goes out. I I, I get that. But I also understand the importance of that little flickering flame because Sergeant First Class Eddie Baker was that flame for me at a time when I was in the darkness. Each and every one of you watching this, whether you know it or not, you're the light in someone's darkness. Whatever you do, don't let your flame go out. Continue to burn. Continue to flicker. Whatever it is you're doing in your life, however it is you're living, someone's watching and someone's feeling a little bit better because they are. So continue to be that light. In their darkness and with that said I'm gonna give you a beautiful parting shot of the homestead I want to wish each and every one of you a wonderful day and make sure to check back in with us for more next time